Memory. It's the key to our identity. Without memory, we're nothing. It's who we are. Then. Memory Hackers. Right now. The city of Chicago passed a law that places a 50% tax on sugary drinks. The city council passed the law with an unspoken assumption that the citizens of Chicago who elected them are buying unhealthy beverages and aren't intelligent enough to make their own decisions. Worse yet, it's an intrusion of the government where it's attempting to serve as a nanny to the people who elected them. The government's role should be minimal and it shouldn't be to provide services to the poor that were once better performed by the church. Here's a question and answer that appeared in Catholic diocese newspapers across the country in the 1940s. A reader asked, what is the principal evil of secularism? And the priest answered, secularism's chief evil lies in the fact that it puts God out of one's life completely, either in a positive manner by getting rid of him in every way and in persecuting both him and everything that has to do with him, or in a negative way, by taking no account of God at all in one's life, individual, domestic, or social. Secularism, a form of materialism, becomes especially evident when civil authorities push it to sinful extreme. Government is no less dependent on God than the individual. No nation can lawfully divorce itself from its duty to worship and obey its creator. If there was truly a mass conversion of hearts in the United States, and the country became overwhelmingly Catholic, we would probably be able to just eliminate the minimum wage and things would take care of themselves. Since it is a natural law that workers should be paid a living wage, Catholic employers would probably feel a responsibility to pay their employers that type of a wage. For example, a living wage was never an issue during the Age of Faith. However, if it turned out that the minimum wage law was eliminated and most employers weren't paying their employees a living wage, it would be appropriate for the government to step in. And this would be consistent with the directives established by Pope Pius XI. What would the government need to do if employers weren't paying a living wage to the primary wage earners in households? Living wage laws would need to be established. However, unlike minimum wage laws that had been replaced, most workers would not be covered by living wage laws. So who wouldn't be covered? Well, among the people who wouldn't be covered would be working people who are working a second job. They would be covered for their first job, but not for the second job because that would be extra income that wouldn't be a necessity. People whose spouses are already covered under the living wage law would also not be covered. And this is because the goal of a living wage is for mothers to stay at home and nurture the children. And if both parents are, aren't working, that means daycare is raising the kids and the goal of a living wage is subverted. All part-time workers would not be covered. However, there would have to be oversight to ensure that unscrupulous employers wouldn't be having their employees work 35 or 38 hours per week just to circumvent the living wage law. Teenagers wouldn't fall under the law. Family members who live in the residence of a person who is covered by the living wage law would also not be covered. Small businesses would also need to be exempted. For instance, businesses with fewer than 15 employees would not be subject to the law. Oversight would be needed to ensure that a larger business doesn't create multiple corporations with fewer than 15 employees with each corporation, and yet each corporation would be operating under the same roof and be sharing processes with one another. Charities would also be exempted. Many people do these types of jobs for no compensation anyway. Finally, in the case of two divorced spouses, both would not be allowed to receive a living wage. Otherwise, the law would create a financial incentive for people to divorce. If only one spouse received a living wage, it would be a financial incentive for couples to stay together. There would also be a need for some sort of incentive such as tax breaks for smaller businesses to pay their employees a living wage. Large businesses that circumvent the living wage law would be subject to fines. Do you have any suggestions for how this might work? If you do, please feel free to post them down below. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this installment, and we'll be back again in about a week with another one in this playlist, and that we're going to discuss some of the forces and organizations that are roadblocks for working people to earn a living wage. 
But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page, which is linked down below. Every day I post additional content that you won't see on this YouTube channel. And please, pray for the church. Get up in the morning, slaving for bread, sir. So that every mouth can be fed. Oh, me Israelites. Get up in the morning, slaving for bread, sir.